Welcome to Civil Engineering Fanatics. Today we are going to deal with structure of timber, the part two of the series, Timber as a Building Material. The structure of a timber essentially describes the part of a timber internally at macro and its micro levels. As we know, timber can be obtained from exogenous and endogenous trees. Exogenous trees are most used in structural applications and have more visibility of internal structure. Hence, we use the cross-section of an exogenous tree to describe the component part of the timber layer for this tutorial. From the visibility aspect, the structure of a timber or a wood can be divided into macrostructure and microstructure. Here, macrostructure and microstructure are explained in this video. We'll be more focused on macrostructure of timber because in engineering purpose, we are more focused on macrostructure and most of the objective type questions for civil engineering exams comes from the macrostructure of timber. Macrostructure of timber. The structural components of timber that are visible to the eye or at a smaller magnification is what we call as macrostructure. The cross section of a tree has several components which differ from one tree to another. But in general, the most important components of a timber are pith or medulla, heartwood, sapwood, cambium layer, medullary rays, and bark. Let's explain each components one by one. Number one, pith or medulla. The innermost central portion of timber that contains the entire cellular tissue is what we call as pith or medulla. When you understand each part of a timber, it is very essential to know what each part is responsible for. For example, pith here is responsible for the nourishment of the tree in its younger age. Next part is sapwood and hardwood. When you observe the cross section of an exogenous tree, there are annular rings surrounding the pith. As shown, there are inner annular rings that are darker in color and outer annular rings that are lighter in color. Now let's study in detail what these rings explains. Sapwood or alburnum. Sapwood are a few outer annular rings that are light in color and they form a near skin to the tree. Sapwood plays an important role in taking nutrients from the roots to the leaves, storing them and supporting the whole tree. Sapwood consists of sap and it is also responsible for the nourishment of the tree in its leaving age or during the recent growth of the tree. So what part of wood is responsible for the nourishment of the tree during its leaving period or during its recent growth is what we call as sapwood. Hardwood. The inner annular rings that are dark in color surrounding the pith constitute the hardwood. Essentially, hardwood is the sapwood that has been clogged with resin and got hardened to support a tree. Here we told sapwoods are light in color. With age, the sap layer hardens and forms hardwood. Hence, the annular rings that surround the pith are also called as hardwood. Hardwood is dark in color and they don't take part in growth of a tree. It is actually the dead portion of the tree. The live portion is the sapwood and when the sapwood gets dead, it is converted into hardwood. This part forms the strongest and most durable part of a tree. Hardwood is responsible for imparting rigidity to the tree and hence a tree with good hardwood yields durable timber for engineering applications. Number three is annual rings or growth rings. Annual rings are concentric circular rings surrounding the pith. Each ring signifies one year of growth of the tree. As shown in the figure below, the cross section showed 24 distinct annual rings. It is a combination of hardwood and sapwood. 4. Campium layer. The thin sap layer that surrounds the sapwood, that is between the bark and the sapwood, forms the campium layer. This layer contains sap which is yet to be converted into sapwood or it is the reproductive layer that results in new tissue formation. Number 5 is inner bark. The layer that surrounds and protects the campium layer is what we call as inner bark. Number six is outer bark. The bark or cortex form the outermost cover or skin of the tree. It forms the outer skin that protects the layer of tree. The bark insulates the tree against temperature exposure and saves the sapwood and the inside layers from drying out. Number eight is medullary rays. These are vertical layers of cellular tissues that are thin radial lines from the pith to the cambium layer. The function of medullary rays is to hold the annual rings together. 
Let's revise each component and their responsibilities quickly. The part that is responsible for the inner stage nourishment is pith. The part that is responsible for providing strength to the wood or timber is hardwood. The part that is responsible for the recent growth of the tree is sapwood or alburnum. The part that is responsible for protecting the campion layer is inner bark. The part that is responsible to protect the whole structure of timber is outer bark. The part that holds the annual rings together from pith to campion layer is called as medullary rays. We calculate the age of the timber by counting the annular rings. Next is microstructure of timber. The structure of wood that is visible only by a greater magnification is what we call as microstructure of timber. A living cell consists of a membrane, a protoplasm, sap and core. Based on the function of a cell, they can be classified into a mechanical cell, conductive cell and storage cell. Mechanical cell provides strength to the timber, while conductive cell conducts or transport nutrients from the roots to the branches as well as the leaves. Storage cell is responsible for storing and transmitting the nutrients. This was all about structure of timber. We have prepared this video by collecting all possible questions coming from the structure of timber part. The next part coming up is the processing of timber. If this video was helpful, let us know by liking, sharing and subscribing to Civil Engineering Fanatics.